in um, SHS. So all spend too much time. So the main focus would be So please, I can't hear you. We have oxytocin, progesterone, estradiol. Hello, sir. We can't hear you. You still can't hear me? Hello, sir. Yep. Yes. You are not loud. We are not loud. Please, I need a response. Is it better now? Yeah, it's better. It's better. Yes, sir. It's better. Okay. Okay. So as I said, we have androgens and testosterone. Androgens are for males. Then, so yes, androgens are for males. Okay. Then estrogens. Estrogens are for females. These are the main sex hormones. Under androgens, we have testosterone. Then, when it comes to estrogen, we have what? Um, estradiol, oxytocin, progesterone, and so on for females. So um, in most situations, during um, development, especially the sex organs, when they are developed, okay, the testosterone, for instance, plays an important role in determining the sex um, determine the sexual organ of what of the male so first the testosterone would what when the testosterone is high in the fetus then it means that with time that sex organ would what would develop into a wolfian duck And since the testosterone are high in the in the fetus, it means first it will produce a substance known as mullerian inhibiting hormone. And its function is to reduce or prevent the, uh, the development of the female sexual organ. It prevents the development of the female sexual organ known as the Mullerian duct. Because the Mullerian duct is solely for females. And we don't want that, that, that organ to, uh, to develop in males. So it means this hormone will be produced so that it would what? It would prevent the development of the Mullerian duct, which is, which is for females. So when the Mullerian duct is prevented from developing, then it means that the male organ will begin to, will begin to grow. Then out of it, there will be development of this vast difference seminal vesicles, which then develops into what? Into the testes that you, um, is for the males. Okay, then with the females, for it to develop, it means that we want the testosterone level to be what? To be low, critically low. It should be very low. 
so that out of it, the Mullerian dart would then what would then develop. And when the Mullerian dart is developed, then with time it will develop into what into the male, the female asexual organ, the ut the uterus, the vagina, and the vulva, and 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 so on. Okay, so these are the things you need to know when it comes to sex determination. Okay, so please, any question when it comes to the sex determination, how it is formed? Fortune, please go ahead. Sir, please, um, with the sex determination, does it mean there are some, there is an individual who has two of the organs? Does it mean it wasn't formed well? Exactly. It, it means that it wasn't formed well, or maybe the person um, biologically is a male, but the Mullerian okay. inhibiting hormone didn't what didn't really produce enough hormone to so prevent. Please, you are all... So I'm saying oh, that it's, can pos it's possible that then it might be your end. Please check your end. It, it is possible that the person was a male. Okay, then um, the Mullerian inhibiting hormone, which would have prevented the development of the female organ. It wasn't enough. The person didn't produce enough of that hormone, thereby leading to the development of what of also the female hormone. Okay. Yeah, so it happens. Okay. So, so what of those that are um turning the transgenders or the listening, do they cut off the female, the males, uh, this thing, and then place the vagina there or? Yes, with the transgender, maybe the person is a film, is a, is a male. The person feels, okay, I feel that I'm a, uh, um, I, I have a female body instead of um, a male. So what, do, what does the person do? So the person wants to be a female, so out of it, they will go in, do some surgeries. They will what? They have ways, ways and means of doing it. They will use their own testes and convert it into what? Into, oh. into their vagina and, and everything for them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, please, any other question? Fortune, your hand is still up. Is it my mistake? Okay. No, sir. Um, yeah, no, it's by mistake. All right. So, um, Daniel. Yes, sir. Uh, please, the Wolfian that I, I can't, I didn't get it well. Did you say it's purposely to, uh, to prevent uh, female organs from uh, uh, developing? Is that what it is? Daniel, your question, I don't really get, I don't really get you. So, um, I'm asking that you see the Wolfian back. Hello. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you say it's, it's to prevent the female organs from developing. The features uh, it prevents the female organs from developing. I don't get it. Is, is it the case that the person is supposed to, uh, to be a male and that there's a chance for the female are going to develop as well. Then you weren't getting. I I don't know whether you join the. Would you please mute yourself? Um, there's negative feedback. Okay, so the thing is, I indicated that with a mill for the whooping duck to develop, it means that they should have higher levels of testosterone. That's the first thing. And when there's high levels of testosterone, it leads to development of this hormone known as Mullerian inhibiting hormone. And this hormone, its function is to reduce or prevent the development of the Mullerian duct being developed in the males because the Mullerian duct is solely for females. It is, that, it is the Mullerian duct that with time develop into what into into the female sexual organ we don't want that sexual organ in what in males so it means 
this malarian inhibiting hormone will then what prevent the development of the malarian duct so that only the wolfian duct will be produced or will be developed in the males, thereby leading to these organs, the vast difference in seminal vesicles, which later develops into testes. Testes. Okay. Okay, so any other question? Oh. Please, if you have a question, please go ahead. And so that so let's be snappy about this so that um, we can move on. We have a lot to do. All right, so I'm going on. So we've already talked about the, this, which is the SRI gene. So we normally say that the SRI gene is found on the Y chromosome, and it is the SRI gene which what which determines that okay, the person should be a male. All right. Okay, so these are things, these are the explanations pertaining to what um, the writer has pertaining, pertaining to the explanations that I gave. All right, all these things, I wouldn't talk about them because it's a self explanatory you already have them. So the next one I'll be doing is session nine, the regulatory and non-regulatory mechanism. So we have different forms that we are supposed to do. We have one known as um, temperature regulation, also known as homeostasis. Um, so under homeostasis, it's more or less like our body regulation of what? Of, yes, the, our body's regulation. So under it, we have different forms. We have temperature, water, okay, heart rate, and so on. Okay. Godwin, your hand is up. What's wrong? Yes, sir. Please, from the beginning, my notebook is a little bit that way. I couldn't follow from the other then, session. May then, I please with indulgence to take it back? No, Godwin, I wouldn't I do that. I have a question on that have, session. We have, um, we have a lot of, uh, we have little, limited time. So what I can tell you is that the videos will be circulated. Go to YouTube and watch. That'll be much better than me going back no please please i'm not requesting i'm not requesting that you go you totally go back and then start from the start so what do you I have really a question do? That, uh, okay my question is has to do with the difference between uh, the forces uh, between genes and then the homos because in the other sessions where we treated homos uh, genes and behaviors we are meant to believe that when a child, uh, when a fetus have a uh, XX uh, genes, directly it will become a, a female child. And then when it is XY, you know that it, it will be a male child. So okay. between genes and then the hormones, which one is the most determin determinant of sex? <laughs> Rationally is, is what is the gene? The gene out of the gene, we will know that, okay, the person is what has a male fetus. So out of the male fetus, we know that the person is, has a male fetus. That will be when there will be uh, development of what? Or there will be production of male hormones. And the male hormones is what? Is the testosterone. So there, it is the gene, the SRI gene, that helps us to know that, okay, since the person has this SRI gene, it means there should be production of what? Male hormones. That's the testosterone, which helps us to what? To, um, which helps in the development of the Wolfian duct and so on and so forth. So without a gene, there's no way there'll be any development of anything. All right. So your tax, I would advise you that, I wouldn't emphasize on this. On this. Your tax is to know the difference between hormones and neurotransmitters. I wouldn't ever emphasize on this in class. So during a spare time, try and get the distinction out. We have several distinctions, get about at least three of the distinctions, difference between hormones and neurotransmitters. So the next one is homeostasis, which has to do with temperature, um, sorry, body regulation. So under it, we have different forms, temperature regulation, water regulation, and heart rate. 
So in terms of temp temperature, we normally say that the human temperature is supposed to be around 37 degrees Celsius, okay? So anything which is out of um, this normal tem temperature, it means that something is wrong. That's out of, it is out of norm. So our body is, is made in, in such a way that, okay, um, it connects with our brain to help us to know that, okay, our temperature is within this form of state, so we need to react. And within the brain, the main area responsible for these things is, is, is known as hypothalamus. Okay, so for instance, when your body temperature, you realize that the, a room that, the room that you are, the place is very hot. My question to the class, so what are some of the um, feelings you get or body, your body reaction? How, do, how does your body react when um, the place is very hot? Okay, Daniel. Uh, you'll be sweating. Okay, any other thing? Sweating. And you also feel uncomfortable. Okay, what of when you when you are cold? What are some of the body reactions? Uh, uh, you shiver, and then your 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 the hair follicle, the hair will close. Like uh, I mean, the whole I don't know how to call it proper. Okay, I, I okay. think so. Okay. I, I get you. So all these things, we call it the what? The physiological mechanisms that you go through when you find yourself in a, temp a temperature which is abnormal, okay? So you can see that whenever you, you feel very cold, you begin to, what, you begin to shiver, then your, ha your hairs, they begin, to, uh, they begin to straighten up and all that. Then the pores also was also closed, as he rightly said. So all these things are physiological mechanisms. Apart from you going through these physiological mechanisms, you also do certain behavioral mechanisms. So, for instance, you are shivering. What are some of the things you do to uh, to um, bring yourself back to a normal state? When you shiver, you find yourself in a cold place. The place is very cold. What are some of the things you do just to uh, just to put your body temperature in a normal state? Please, let, let's be snappy about this. All right, Daniel. Yeah, you either, you know, put on some heavy clothes uh, and then also do some rubbing. You, sometimes you rub our, our palms together. Okay. To, or you sit yeah, behind. Uh, generate fire. some heat. Within, exactly. so, yeah, set fire, yes. All these things yeah. are behavioral mechanisms we do. Behavioral mechanisms we do. The same thing applies to when you are, you find yourself in a warm place. You begin to what you begin to open the windows, or you lose you you wear what um, loose clothes. Okay. All these things are things we do just to what just to um, move our our body temperature from what, from abnormal to normal. So that's the behavioral mechanisms we are talking about. So for you to go through the behavioral mechanisms and the physiological mechanisms. The physiological mechanism is the same as me talking about the autonomic re reactions. Autonomic reactions, we don't have control over the situation. So maybe you, uh, you, feel, you, you find yourself in a cold situation. You begin to shiver. It's not like you intentionally, you are intentionally what, shivering. It is an auto automatic thing which is happening to you. So that's what we call it, autonomic reaction. All right. So for you to experience either uh, physiological or autonomic reactions or behavioral reactions, it is dependent on what? On your brain. It is dependent on your brain, especially your hypothalamus. So that's why when we were talking about brain and behavior, we indicated that the hypothalamus plays a lot of roles. It, it helps us during temperature regulation, hunger test, sexual behaviors and so on. So the hypothalamus plays a lot of roles. And within the hypothalamus, we have a specific area which helps us to go through the autonomic reactions. We call it the preoptic area. So when you are cold, okay, for you to shiver or for your, your hairs, for your hairs with, on your skin to, to stand up and all that, it means the preoptic area Will be activated. The preoptic area within the hypothalamus will be activated. 
okay and it helps you to what it help it signals to your body that hey the place that you are is cold so you need to watch you need to do something so that's why you begin to watch shiver so you shivering is a way of the body telling you that something ought to be done because where you are the temperature is what is abnormal so something ought to be done all right then for you to have conscious effort to maybe if you are cold you are shivering for you to have conscious effort to what to set fire or heating up yourself or put on what on a lot of a lot of dense clothes and all that that's the behavioral reaction for you to do that it means your lateral hypothalamus will be activated signaling to you that Charlie where you are is not safe something ought to be done to bring your temperature into a normal state all right Bar, your hand is up with the with the with the pre optic here assuming if it is defective or something uh, has gone wrong with it with that area of the of the, of the hypothalamus so what happened if you if you if you get a cold area or if you get to a temperature that is not I mean, so, Bawa, habitable to your system. Bawa, so this, I wouldn't this answer game, this. I would, I would throw it up to you. What do you think will happen? Based on the function of the preoptic area, what do you think will happen? It, it will Come again. I mean, maybe if it is fire, you maybe you will get burned. If it is what? Like if the area is not habitable, like the heat, it is so much heat and you are there, maybe you get hurt. Okay. So yes, definitely it means that you wouldn't be able to what sense your temperature. So for instance, you know the preoptic area signals to you that okay, the place is what the place is cold, so something ought to be done. So you you shivering is a way of signaling to you that hey, something ought to be done. So if that signal doesn't come, then it means you what you'll be cold. Or you you, yeah. you freeze yeah. to death. The same thing applies. Maybe a place, the place that you are, it is very very hot. You could see okay. that you wouldn't sweat. There will be no sweating because okay. if, um, that preoptic area is what it's leaching, so there will be no signal. So if care is not taken, definitely the warm the warm food what could easily kill you. That's what happens. Okay. Yeah. And a lateral um hypothalamus as i said it means it would inform you to make decisions so that you bring yourself back to what a normal state like you putting on clothes or if the place is what if the place is warm you put you try to what you try, you try to maybe um open the windows or even switch on the aircon or wear some what some loose clothes or lose some of the clothes that you are wearing just to feel comfortable yeah so that's how the lateral hypothalamus helps you to what to do that. All right, so that's all when it comes to temperature regulation. If you have any questions, please let me know. Daniel. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, as, as you said, if you get into a room which is hot, uh, in the initial hours, or maybe the few minutes, you begin to react to this uh, 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 to the place as being hot, but as time goes on, your body adapts to to the to the, the uh, to the environment, and then you don't feel that heat sensation anymore. Even if you feel it, it should be it is going to be less. Which which of these things is responsible for that? Definitely, you sweat. Which of the mechanism? Which of the mechanism will be responsible? Because initially you sweat, but as time goes on, you your your body will be uh, kind of adapted to the place so that the sensation you used to feel earlier will, will reduce or even you don't feel it any longer. Really, I don't, I, because what I know is that no matter what, if the place is very, very hot, no matter the situation, that's, that's uh, me for instance, I'm, I'm using my myself as, as an example. No matter what, if okay. the place is very, very, very hot, you sweat profusely, consistently. 
unless okay uh, i'm i'm also using myself as an example sir uh -huh. you know this uh this uh, uh doing so doing so situations you know uh -huh. when there's light you put on your fan or whatever if it's yeah. easy you put it on yeah but when there's a light off when there's uh -huh. a light off you don't have the fan to fan you okay. but after sometimes you you'll be sweating then maybe some minutes pass you you realize that you stop sweating and you'll be able to sleep even Daniel, though let me, the, let, the me, let, me let me ask you this when you yeah. you realize that okay the place is very hot what are some of the things you do you try to oh yeah you you uh-huh Yes, you you okay. You try to open the windows anyway to let in some fresh so don't, air. Don't you do that? Yes, you do. So that's it. But sometimes, but sometimes you the the windows are already open, and uh -huh. you add a fan to feel more comfortable. But as soon as the light is off, you, you have only the window left, but still that's you'll be able to sleep. So long as you have the if you have the window, because initially you were sweating profusely in a in a sense that the window. Having been open, so you, you weren't getting some sort of air passing through. But by, by the moment you open, even though the place would be piped, there will be uh, there will be heat all right. It wouldn't be that intense like previously, which um, made you to sweat profusely. So that's the essence. You've done something to regulate your body for a while. So out of it, that um, temperature which was high wouldn't be what wouldn't be too much, thereby making you what. Um, not sweating. So that's the essence because you've done something to regulate your stuff. That's the behavioral reaction you are talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. Godwin. Okay. So what about this one too? Oh. Like if you if you are, you are in the you are in the AC, you see at the moment you step out of the AC, the 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 sensation you feel outside is very strong like you feel the heat more, but after some time, the, 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 the feeling reduces. So I, I want to know if there is a mechanism that controls that aspect of reactions and feelings, you know, moving from one le level of temperature to the other. <laughs> it all boils down to your hypothalamus. It all boils down to your hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, all these areas that we are, we are talking about, okay, the preoptic area, the lateral hypothalamus, they are all within what? The hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, its function is what? Is to monitor your temperature. Okay? So you moving on, you all of a sudden, you are in what? In a cold situation. Okay? Then you've moved to what? To um, a place which is quite warm. Definitely, your hypothalamus would signal to you that the temperature is what? It's different. Is different. So, so long as um your um temperature is in is in a in a hot in a hot situation, definitely it will be normal for you because you've already moved from a cold situation whereby maybe you were shivering to what to um, a normal state at that point in time because your temperature is now at this now moving to its normal state. So definitely, things will be normal for you. So there's no way your preoptic area will be activated just to, what, just to um, signal to you that, hey, the place is hot, so you need to, what, you need to um, loosen up something or um, you need to sweat. Because you've already moved from a different environment, which was very cold, to a place which is quite hot. So at that time, your preoptic area wouldn't signal automatically that hey, you need to sweat profusely because you are just moving from one um, polarized state to the other. All right. Oh, some few people, their hands were up by since they've. Um... All right. So, is it that your questions have been um, clarified? Okay, so with for my area, I wasn't I wasn't going to ask a question. I just want to contribute to the question that my colleague is asking. Please, your voice is very very low. I don't. Okay, I I said I wasn't going to ask a question, but I just want to contribute. Okay, to the discussion. All right. 
Yeah, so in my view, I think when you, you, you are at a place for some couple of minutes, your system begins to adjust to the area, regardless of the fact that you may open your window and then let in some fresh air and other stuff. Once the, envir the, the environment shifts and changes, and then the, the sensation at the time is repeated, you begin to adapt your system to that. Um, go Godwin, I don't know what, what is really distracting, distracting you. Your voice is very, very far. So, Bawa, please go ahead. Okay, my, my, my is a question. All right. Concerning the, uh, for example, I want to know whether if I'll be right, if they ask this question and I answer it this way. If they ask a question about like, describe one function of, a uh, one way that hypothalamus help maintain balance in the body. Uh-huh, so. So if I, if, if, if I, by, 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 by using the, the, the pre-optic area as, re, as a regulatory function of the, of the body temperature, would I be wrong? Hmm. One way the hypothalamus the hypothalamus cells balance what? The, I'm, I'm saying that if 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 I use if if I say uh, I the, the, the pre optic you, you know the pre optic uh, that no but I want you to repeat I'm your saying question. that the question is, okay describe one one way the hypothalamus health maintains balance in the body. Okay. So and then I it. use uh, the the the, the pre-optic area in my explanation that it is as as part of the function of the of the hypothalamus. Oh, yeah. The pre-optic area helps in maintaining. The so then, depending on why, where you are manipulating. Hey, what is really happening? Are you doing a side? Well, please unmute your mic and speak. Some people were having extra. Um, ah, okay, okay, sorry. Ah, so I'm saying, uh, will I be wrong if I use the the pre-optic area in explaining my 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 myself to describe the function of the hypothalamus in no, maintaining body wrong. balance? You wouldn't be wrong. Okay. 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 Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so the next one is sleep. The next one is sleep. So we normally talk about the fact that when it comes to sleep, um, you are supposed to know what we mean by circadian rhythm. So please, who knows what the circadian rhythm is all about? Please let, let's be snappy about this. Circadian rhythm. What does it really mean? Oh, nobody knows. Okay. So basically the secondary. Okay. Hmm. All right. Let him try, sir. Please go ahead. The circadian rhythm is, is a mechanism that uh, tells the brain of uh, the time, time the, the changes of time. Okay. Okay. So it helps. It For helps example, regulate our sleep wake. Time. Yeah, you're right. So it helps yes. regulate our sleep wake cycle. So we normally we normally say that it is the body's um, internal biological clock 